Hello, I am Marcus from EV Journey and I want to do a new mini series about how to choose the right EV for you. So this is more aimed at petrol and diesel drivers who are thinking about buying their first EV. And today we're going to talk about the most important issue um, for a lot of us who drive petrol and diesel cars and that is range. This is a mini series, there'd be lots more useful information so please click subscribe below. So to give you a bit of background about me, I live in Portugal and for the past three years I have been researching EVs and I have been wanting to buy an EV for a long time now. I drove a petrol C4 Cactus which I recently sold and I am going to purchase a Volkswagen ID3 which should arrive in one or two weeks time now. But I want to talk about how do we know that the EV we want to purchase has the right range for us. Now there's an amazing tool on the internet called a Better Route Planner. So I'm going to show you how to use a Better Route Planner and how to choose the best EV for you for range with the Better Route Planner. But first, what you should do and what I did was in one month, every day, reset the trip on your car and write down how many kilometers you actually do. My trip on my car also gave me the average consumption and it also gave me the average speed. That's something else I wrote down. And over the month, you will see your total monthly drive. For me, it was 2,400 kilometers and I have regular trips to the Algarve and back. It is very important that you know your requirements but before trying to choose an electric vehicle and this is where a better route planner really can help you perhaps you're choosing between a zoe a leaf a model 3 a kia e-soul a volkswagen id3 or other ev and you need to know if they meet your range requirements so we're going to get straight into a better route planner i'm going to talk about wltp about average speed and about internet range tests after we have got into the, a better route planner. This is a better route planner. This is the web version. There's also a mobile version. So the first thing you need to do is pick your electric vehicle because a better route planner is to plan electric vehicle trips and make your life easy. So here we've got car models. As you can see, I have selected the Volkswagen ID3, the 58 kilowatt without the heat pump because that's the version I'm getting. Now. This here is from Moita, where I live, just south of Lisbon, to where I work here, Port Salvo. So it's already calculated the route for me, but this is not actually the route I take. Now what we can do here is set up the departure battery percentage, that's 80%. And it's because Volkswagen recommend, and most manufacturers recommend, that if you charge your car daily, you should never charge it above 80%. So for daily charging, it should be 80%. You should only really charge to 100% if you're going to use that 100% straight away, for example, if you're going on a long motorway journey. But ideally, you shouldn't go over 80%. So when you're choosing your electric vehicle you need to keep that in mind that you're not actually going to charge it to 100% very often if you want to keep the batteries in good condition. Here it's also got some other things sort of destination when we arrive so you can set it to 20% perhaps we set that to 10% so we can have it at 10% destination when we arrive. So you set these variables here so you can choose different kinds of cars if you want to compare them. This is not the actual route I take from Moita to work. Normally I take the other bridge because at the time in the morning I go there's a lot less traffic on the other bridge. So I'm going to set this up quickly here of how we go via the Vash de Gama bridge and I'm also going to do the return as well. And I've set my home I set this as a waypoint just so we go past the Vash de Gama bridge. I go to work I come back here and set this as another waypoint to go over the Vash de Gama bridge and we come back home. So let's calculate that. So as you can see it calculated the route and we start off at 80%. It's telling us the distances and how long it takes to get to each point. And at the end it summarises it. So it's going to take me 1 hour 17 minutes to go to work and come back. Obviously I'm going to wait at work and then come back. But it's, you know it's because I've set it up. So basically the important figure here is I start at 80% and I arrive at 48%. So that means I just use 32% of the battery to go to work and come home again. Now this is quite a long distance, 106 kilometres. As I've got a charger at home, this is perfectly fine. Now if I was relying on 
public chargers, 32%, I'd probably have to charge on public chargers every second day to get the car up to 80%, or I could perhaps charge at work. There are normal plug socket kits at work. I'm not sure I'm allowed to use them. But this is for me. For you, it could be very different. You could have a different car. For example, let's just choose a different car for the exact same route. So a car I really like and I was interested in was the Renault Zoe. So let's just look at the Renault Zoe. Look at the 50 kilowatt hour version and let's start exactly the same again. As you can see, with the Renault Zoe, it's 1 hour 17 minutes. And I start at 80% and arrive with 38%. Go to work and come back. And when I come back home, I'll be at 38%. So this is actually used more percentage of the energy, 42%. But as you can see, to go to work and come back every day, I don't need to recharge. And the Zoe is absolutely perfect for me. But these are the calculations you have to do with a better route planner. Now, I go to the Algarve very often. And the Algarve is about 300 kilometers from my house. With the ID3, let's see how long it takes me to get to the Algarve. The difference is when I go to the Algarve, I can probably start at at least 100%. And another important thing for me when I go to the Algarve, the flat in the Algarve, it doesn't have a home charger. So I really want to arrive with 20% because you shouldn't le let the battery go below 20% for a long time. So I'm going to start the car at 100%. There's other parameters we can set as well. For example, you can set the maximum speed limit. Here it's 130. You can set road conditions. Wind is very important. So every time you go to drive anywhere, you can set the wind, the temperature and the weight. So as you can see, it's really excellent. It takes the work out of getting an EV, but we want to see if an EV will do what we want. So this is a trip again I take very often. So I'm going to start at my home here and here I've got Tavira. So let's do start and calculate it. This is for 20 degrees, which is quite often. So what it's actually telling me, I start here and I go all the way down here and at this public charger here on the motorway, I have to stop for 18 minutes. So what it's saying, if I start at 100%, I have to stop there for 18 minutes to get from, I should arrive at 55% and I need to charge it 74%. That will take 18 minutes on this 50 kilowatt hour charger that's there. And so basically, that's very easy for me. 18 minutes stop on the way, time to go to the toilet, perhaps have a cup of tea. So that seems really excellent. And when I arrive in Tavira here, I will actually arrive with 20%. So it seems for me that the ID3 first is a good choice. So if we have a look here, that's taking three hours, four minutes. Um, I can go at 120 kilometers an hour and an 18 minute stop for a journey of 284 kilometers. So this seems absolutely wonderful. Another thing I wanted was the Zoe. So let's do the same trip in the Zoe. Change to Zoe, Zoe, it will select the 50, exactly the same parameters and let's try it. So this is done, amazing calculations for us. So with the Zoe, it recommends I drive all the way down here and this is orange. So what does orange mean? Orange means that I've got a speed restriction. If we look here, it says I shouldn't drive more than 100 kilometers an hour. So I go all the way down the motorway, driving at 100 kilometers an hour. I get to this charger and I should charge for 31 minutes. So another break for 31 minutes. Then the rest of the motorway, I can drive at normal speed. So when I stop here, the car will be at 11%. I should charge up to 40% and then I can get to Tavira with 20% and it's taking me three hours and 36 minutes. As you can see already in the Zoe 50, it's taking me longer than within the ID3. The ID3, I think it was three hours and four minutes. This is three hours and 36 minutes, so 30 minutes longer. Now let's choose another car, another car I was interested in for example was the Nissan Leaf so you can do this with different cars that you're thinking of buying and see which one suits you so let's do the 62 kilowatt hour version Nissan Leaf and see if that one is better or worse so Nissan Leaf so you can drive at 120 kilometers an hour well I had to stop here for 18 minutes in the ID3 first you have to stop for 36 minutes in a Nissan Leaf, the stop is a bit longer. You get there at 44% and you have to charge to 89% on this 50 kilowatt hour charger. So that's Nissan Leaf. Let's ch choose a car which should have a better range than my car. And that's the Kia e Nero. So let's choose the Kia e Nero, 64 kilowatts. And let's calculate that. 
So with the Kia e-Nero, instead of stopping for 18 minutes, I just have to stop for 14 minutes. So you know, that's even better, the Kia e-Nero, than the Volkswagen ID3. Actually get there under three hours. So you get there in two hours 59 instead of three hours and four minutes. Something else I want you to be aware of is battery size. Just because something has a big battery doesn't mean the range is better because it depends on the chargers. In Portugal, we've only got 50 kilowatt hour chargers. So let's change it to a very nice car with a much bigger battery than my car, the Audi e-tron. So let's go for the Audi e-tron. I don't know which one shall I go for. Let's go with this one, 50, and do start. As you can see, the Audi e-tron is a much more expensive car than my car, probably, and it's got a bigger battery. But here it actually takes you 42 minutes to stop. And that's because in Portugal here, we've only got a 50 kilowatt hour charger. If we had a 200 kilowatt hour charger, it would probably be quicker in the e-tron. So just because something's got a bigger battery doesn't mean that it's better. Now let's imagine you don't live near Lisbon, you live in Porto. So let's change this to Porto, Porto, Portugal. That's in the north of Portugal. And let's change this, let's go to Villamora. So we selected Villamora in the Algarve. Now let's look at this, let's go. So basically to get from Porto here to Villamora in the Algarve, that's a distance of 564 kilometers, five hours, 15 minutes driving time. And you have got two stops here. So you've got the first stop, which is 60 minutes on the 50 kilowatt hour charger. So we should get there with 36% and we have to charge up to 98%. Then just after Lisbon, you've got another stop for 56 minutes from 30% to 88% to get to the Algarve. Now that actually gives us the charging time, total charging time here is one hour 55 minutes. This is because with the ID3, we've got 100 kilowatt charging, but in Portugal, we've only got 50 kilowatt charges at the moment. In fact, Galp, the petrol station is building a 150 kilowatt charger here near Lisbon. Galp, if they got petrol stations on the motorways, perhaps they'll be putting 150 kilowatt chargers there soon. So if you do this once or twice a year from Porto to the Algarve and back, you may say, well, perhaps this 60 minute stop, I'll have dinner, perhaps this 56 minute stop, we we'll just be annoyed and, you know, have a tea or coffee break or something. But if you do this every weekend because you live in Porto and you have an apartment in Villa Mora, for example, and I know actually somebody who does, then you may say, well, two hours there, extra time and two hours back is just too much for us. We can't do it at the moment. So either you choose a different car, such as a Tesla long range. Um, we'll have a look in a minute how long this takes on Tesla long range. Or you say, I really want the Volkswagen ID3 and I'm going to wait perhaps next year or the year after until there is 150 kilowatt hour chargers on the route from Porto to the Algarve. So let's change to Tesla model long range. You see how easy it is to select the cars. You can really choose the car that's best suited to your needs, to the journeys you make. So let's choose a Model 3. Let's do long range, 18 inch tires. So as you can see with the fantastic Model 3 long range, you only have to stop for 12 minutes at a Tesla supercharger, very quick, because the charge in here is very quick, because it's supercharger. Then you have to stop here in Alcastusal for 23 minutes at that supercharger. So what would take you seven, hours and 11 minutes in an ID3 because of the charging infrastructure currently in Portugal, it only takes you five hours 57 in a Tesla Model 3 long range. If you live in Porto and need to go to the Algarve regularly, I suggest you get a Tesla Model 3 long range. Let's go back to the ID3. I want to show you how very specific this is to country. So if we do Paris, yeah, Paris Ile de France, that will do and let's go to Bordeaux and do start. So this is from Paris to Bordeaux. Obviously there's probably a lot of traffic in Paris, but let's just see how it is. This is an ID3. Now what's interesting is from Porto to the Algarve, it was 564 kilometers. And this is 565 kilometers. And see how much quicker it is. There's only one 30 minute stop and one 35 minute stop. And probably if you was actually in a petrol gaha, this would be the same. And these stops are short because you have a 100 kilowatt ionity charger here and you have another um, rapid charger here on the way to Bordeaux. So it's really important to do the trips that you make.
but you see the difference. There's only one hour stop required here, where in Portugal it wasn't a two hour stop. So as you can see, your charging network, where you go, makes a big difference. And this application is absolutely amazing for choosing the electric car that's right for you, right for your journeys and right for your country. So you've all probably heard of WLTP. So that's the measure they use to give the range when you purchase a car. So for example, the ID3 has a WLTP of 420 kilometers. The Model 3 Short Range Plus has an LTP of 409 kilometers. And the Tesla Model 3 Long Range has a WLTP of 550 kilometers. So a lot of people on the internet say WLTP is not very realistic and it's a very bad way to know the range. So then they come up with what they call the realistic range. Now, it's just rubbish. The realistic range doesn't exist. There's no realistic range for an EV. Basically, if I'm driving my EV in the Black Forest in Germany with lots of hills, I'm going to get a completely different range than if I drive it in the flat Netherlands. So realistic range doesn't exist. What is the WLTP? The WLTP is a scientific test in a test laboratory that all new electric vehicles go under. So it's just an overall test to give you a slight comparison. It doesn't mean that you're going to actually get that number of kilometers. You could get a lot less than that, or you could get a lot more than that, depending on your driving style. What's better with using a better route planner is you don't have to do all the maths yourself. Now, average speed is very important because I said on my trip to work and back, it's 120 kilometers, and at least 80 or 90% of that is actually motorways. Well, I tried to do 120. Now I'm going a bit before rush hour and I come back a bit earlier than rush hour. So normally I don't get too much traffic, but it's very hard to keep to a constant 120. And part of the route is 50 kilometers, but a very small part. And other parts of the route are like 60 or 70 or 80 kilometers. If you were to ask me what my average speed was, I would probably say just over 100 kilometers an hour. But when I actually did it in my car every day and looked at it, I was like, shocked how low my actual average speed was. So even though I was trying to travel at 120 kilometers on the motorway route as much as possible, my average speed was between 70 and 80 kilometers an hour, which is much, much less than I was actually expecting. So it's very important that you write down your average speed and if your car doesn't give it to you, you calculate it. Because there's lots of 90 km h range tests, 120 km h range tests, and those range tests are done where you actually are traveling for a long time at 120 or 90 kilometers an hour. If really your average speed is much lower than you think it is, your range will actually be better the 90 km hour range test or 120 km hour range test. I think especially petrol and diesel drivers think that we think we drive quicker than we do. And I think that we think our average speed is quicker than what it is. So it, the average speed is very important and this might have a big influence for you on range. Take all internet range reviews, everything with a pinch of salt. Thank you for watching this video. Please click subscribe. The next video is going to be about the price of EVs. And as I said, within the next week or two weeks i'm going to receive my volkswagen id3 i'm going to do tests on it i'm going to give my experience of moving from a petrol car to volkswagen id3 click like and thank you for watching and i hope this has been really insightful for you thank you